Hi, this is Stephanie and Chelsea. We are the founders of CS Planners, and today we have Courtney with us. So Courtney Henry is a marketing expert. She has done marketing for Disney and at the NFL, Boston University. So she has a very, very impressive resume and we're excited to have her here. So thank you so much for joining us, Courtney. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. So you are a marketing expert. What, in a summary, what does that mean? So I help people understand um, what their brand stands for, uh, what they have to offer to prospective customers and clients, and then who those ideal customers and clients are. Once we've defined that, um, my role as a marketing expert is then to help them understand, okay, how do I bring that message to market so that I'm connecting with those ideal people, making a relationship, and then converting them to a paying customer. Um, so really taking them through the journey of, I have a product, what is the solution I'm solving, who needs that solution and how do we put them together to create a sale or create an ongoing relationship with a client or customer. That's amazing. And also I feel like it's important trying to find your customers because people know what they want, but they don't know how to find them. So can you give us some tips on what you would tell people and how to find their ideal client? Absolutely. So I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs and small business owners, and my experience is actually working in traditional advertising agencies with national and international brands. But something that I found as I started kind of moving through my life and working with entrepreneurs and small business owners is when you are an entrepreneur or a small business owner, you have a strong idea and a strong product or service, but you're not a marketing expert. You may be, for example, a nutrition nutritionist or a health coach, or you may be someone who specializes in clothing or textiles and you want to create an athleisure line. You don't necessarily have all the background of marketing. And that's where I really come in to help you identify your ideal audience. The reason that identifying your ideal audience and then crafting a custom marketing strategy to fit that is so important is that it's estimated that emotion is the key driver in 95% of purchase and investment decisions. So this means that simply just putting your name out there doesn't mean anything to your customers or clients anymore. What means something is creating a personal personal connection. So an individual saying, oh, that's my style, or oh, they get me, they understand my problem, and I think they might be able to help me solve it. So the first is just recognizing that identifying the right audience is critical to building a successful, sustainable, and profitable business. So I also want to caveat that that's especially more um, true now than ever with COVID-19 and the focus on online shopping and services because people aren't necessarily just walking down the street and discovering your brand or your offer. Um, it is a saturated, that doesn't mean that you can't be profitable. It just means you need to work a little bit smarter. So the first step that I recommend to individuals is to really start with the problem or the product, um, excuse me, the problem that your product or service solves. So what solution are you offering to them? Are you offering health services for someone who has an autoimmune condition? Are you offering a product to a runner to enhance their performance? Are you offering a course to new business owners to help them get up to speed and scale their business quicker? Um, what is the solution that you're providing? So once you've de find what your solution is, you have to kind of retrofit that to, well, who's seeking my solution? So start thinking about who is that individual that has a problem that my service or product solves. From there, you start to develop a general sense of who that person is. When I work with my clients and we have a general idea, we start to go through a little bit of um, what I'll call it a treasure hunt uh, process where we have a general sense of who the client or customer is, but we want to learn more about them because that's what's going to inform our marketing plan. That's going to inform how we invest our time and our money. Um, and that's going to inform how we differentiate ourselves from our competitors. So what that means, it's a, a multi-step process. Um, first, you look at their demographics. So demographics are external factors. Their gender, their age, their location, their income. Um, other factors such as marital status. Are they married? Are they single? Do they have kids? 
What type of occupation are they in? That starts to build a general sense of their lifestyle. And then we start to partner together to define psychographics, which is more about how they think, they feel, they believe. So what's their current lifestyle like? What's their desired lifestyle like? So for example, in the case of someone who's suffering from a health condition, their current lifestyle may be that they feel um, very isolated, they feel limited in the activities that they can do, they feel alone, they feel struggling, they feel like there's no help. Um, their desired lifestyle is that they want a partner, they want someone that believes in them and that believes that they can get better and that is willing to hold their hand and help them navigate all the ups and downs that that individual is going to go through on their way to healing. So we have their current lifestyle versus their desired and that's actually a really pivotal point because that's usually where your brand or your product or service comes into play and that's where we talk about your value proposition and how you're helping them achieve that lifestyle. Um, it's also important just to think about what are their values, what brands do they follow, what are their passions, what are their motivations, and what are their fears. Um, are there fears around price, safety, or health? If there are, then in your marketing message, you need to work to overcome those fears. So you need to hold their hand and help them understand why they can overcome those fears to invest in your product or service. Um, so kind of painting a picture. And when I say treasure hunt, I say these are all insights and little nuggets that you can use in your website copy. It can be used in course creation. It can be used in your social media activities, taking all of these nuggets of information and using them as the foundation for any business decision or marketing decision that your brand makes. Um, and then lastly, you like to think about how your brand intersects with them as an individual. So we talked about what their current lifestyle is, what their desired lifestyle is. Um, how does your product or service help address the pain points and get them to that desired lifestyle? That's where you really wanna focus your time and your energy and your investment. So what benefits or transformation will they experience when they invest in you as a brand? And what's the consequence if they don't invest? Sometimes you have to pull out, it's not necessarily, um, in scare or fear tactic, but more of you're worth it. If you do not invest in this, you may be further down this road a year or two to come. Um, or on the flip side, if you invest in this, you may save money and time within three months time, six months time, a year. Really depends on the nature of your product or service, but there's always a give and take and a trade-off. And you want to help your customers understand what trade-off they're making, both by choosing to invest or not invest in your product or service. Um, and then lastly, when you look at how your brand intersects with a customer, you're also um, identifying how to differentiate yourselves from competitors. So what are you doing or offering that's different from anything else in the marketplace? And that's where you can really lean into so that folks understand, yeah, this brand is the right fit and I wanna partner with them. So I just gave you a lot of information on how to start, um, get started, but any questions about that? Anything you want me to dive deeper into? That is incredible. I feel like that's a lot of very useful information. That is incredible. Um, the one thing I guess I, I'm curious about um, is those, what kind of struggles do you often see like for new businesses just starting out? And like, what would you suggest on ways that they can overcome them? That's a great question. I think there's two struggles that I see when I'm working with businesses that are just starting out. First is they want to be everything to everyone. Um, I personally even struggled with this when I first started out because there were so many interests that I had and I wanted to help so many people. But in order to be an expert and in order to gain credibility and authority, it's really important to find a niche. And now it doesn't need to be so focused that you're cutting off a full, you know, segments or targets of people, but it does need to be focused enough so that both you understand where to invest your time and energy and your clients or customers understand if they belong to that group and if it's the right fit. So my first recommendation to business owners is always, um, rather than think broad, think narrow, and if we need to, we can expand as we go, but really whittle it down so you have a very clear, concise focus. Um, the second thing that I think that is really difficult 
when you are starting out is that um, entrepreneurs um, and small business owners, they're really looking to get their product and service out there. They're not necessarily thinking about it from the perspective of people already, or people need to find out who I am or how I exist. So they think if I build it, they will come. But so often that is not necessarily true, especially online. If you, people don't know you exist, they're not going to Google you. They're not going to seek out your Instagram page. So I think that switching your mindset to, I have something valuable. How can I get in front of those people that could benefit from it as opposed to, I'm going to launch my website and I'm going to run a few ads and hopefully some people like it and buy it. Mm -hmm. I think switching to, I'm going to seek them out and show them my value, I think really changes the game for uh, businesses when they're starting out and helps you save a lot of time and money in the long run. Yeah, that that makes complete sense. And everything is more competition now because a lot of people are looking to start a business online, especially during these times. I have a question more about the scare tactic that you mentioned about. <laughs> That's because I, I took sociology in school and we talked about like the sociology of why people would scare you to buy a product. But like, I was always confused because I was like, how, how do you scare people into buying a product? But I know you're not like supposed to threaten them. So how do you use that scare tactic to have people find you? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So I'm going to actually answer that from being a client or a customer myself. Mm -hmm. um, I want to caveat with, I say it's a tactic, but I mean it in the most genuine, authentic way, not in a used car salesman way. Yeah. I mean it in that oftentimes people are afraid to invest money in themselves or in their business. They either think that they're not worth it. They're scared it's not going to work for them. They're scared of what other people are going to think. And so they don't do it um, for fear of some sort. It's important, though, to remind them that especially if this is important, this is probably not the first time they've been looking into a product like this or a service like this or a course like this. There have been times I'm thinking of, um, so I actually suffered from Lyme disease and um, an autoimmune condition, and I had spoke with a functional nutritionist that I um, had been referred to and she was very expensive. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to invest in this right away. Mm -hmm. And then nine months went by and I had been to 12 doctors. I had worked with other nutritionists, other um, naturopaths, and I just wasn't getting better. And something told me she's worth it, but the price tag scared me. But we had a conversation. She was super authentic and genuine and reminded me that it's been nine months and nothing else has worked. And so at this point, it's really worth it for me to invest my time and my energy. I owe it to myself. If this is something that can help me get better and sure enough, it has helped me heal and she's been a wow. wonderful partner. Um, that's something that I needed to hear at that moment because I was not comfortable taking that leap even though I was very desperate. Um, and I think that that's an extreme example but I think so often people look at courses online and they see a price tag and they're like, oh, nope, I'm going to pass. But think about what that return on investment might be. If you're investing in yourself or if you're investing in your business, hiring a business coach, um, hiring staff to save you time and money, um, hiring a VA is a good example. A lot of business owners are like, you know what? I can just keep managing my email inbox. I can just keep managing my social media. I'll save a little bit of money. But what they don't realize is that on the other side of that is they're missing out on potential clients. They're missing out on mm -hmm. speaking opportunities. They're missing out on opportunities to grow or enjoy time with their family. And so there's always a give and take. There's always a trade off. And I think that's where it comes in is reminding them that yes, the investment might seem big, but on the other side of that, there's always a downside too that you need to acknowledge if you're going to pass up on the offer. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I feel like oftentimes like they don't, yeah, people just forget about that. They just, sometimes they 
I've seen it where they just launch their website or launch their business and then that's it. They don't really think about it from like the customer point of view. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. a good perspective to think of. And you actually bring up a really good point. So as we were chatting, um, earlier on about kind of the steps you take to define your audience. And I do have a, a free tool that will help you walk through that. So no one needs to be taking copious <laughs> notes or remember all of that. But one of the things I like to remind people is sometimes you go through that exercise and you might be a new business owner or you might be an established business owner that's kind of just doing a temperature check or a check in on your audience. It may be that you started out with who you thought had a problem that your product can solve. You go through the exercise of digging into who they are and that treasure hunt of different insights that you can use. And then when you go to compare that ideal client with your brand, there might be a misalignment. So it may be that um, their belief system or their value system or their income level aren't matching with what you as a brand want to offer. And that's okay. And that's why this is a really important step because it allows you to fine tune and refine it. So what you had mentioned about kind of like business owners, sometimes they launch and they just set it and forget it. This is something you have to keep going back to. Sometimes it's through social listening on your social media feeds. Sometimes it's by stepping back and looking at how your client base has evolved. Um, sometimes it's sitting down and actually putting pen to paper with this exercise, but it's definitely a fluid process that you have to check in on regularly um, because nothing in business is static anymore and nothing is permanent. Wow. So if someone's marketing something, how long do you think they should start promoting it before they actually launch? So say they're launching a website. Obviously you don't want to go the first day. Hey, I just launched a website. There needs to be a bit of a buildup. What, what's an appropriate time frame for that? That's a really great question. I think it depends too on where you're promoting it and what your follower base is. So I'm going to take, for example, um, the, case of promoting it on social media. So if you already have a loyal following, um, then I think sharing it, you know, building some interest a week to two weeks out is great. I think if you're literally just starting out and you're launching your social media pages at the same time of your website, probably two to three days. But I think that less important than the amount of time is more about how you craft that message and a lot of businesses, it is exciting that you launch a new website um, and it's very exciting for the business owner because usually it's a lot of time, sometimes tears, um, investment, um, <laughs> and it's, a, you know, it's a process to get one up and you're excited and you want to share it with the world, but your clients don't care so much about your website as opposed to what your website can do for them. So what information is there? Is the sign up process easier? Are you offering a sale on the courses or content on your website? Do you have free information on their website or can they network with other people? So I think less important is the time frame as much as it is what when they go to your website is most important and what are they going to get out of it? I want to talk about how people can find their clients. So we figured out at this point what their demographic is. What do you think is the easiest way or the most efficient way for a person starting off to start putting their information out there? Is it like social media? Is it email marketing? What strategies would you suggest? That's a great question. So something I feel really strongly about for people um, at the very beginning stage is to focus on organic marketing first. So free or earned mm -hmm. um, and do paid second because I'm a firm believer that if someone isn't going to interact with your free post, they're not going to interact with your paid post. And you can save a lot of time and energy and stress if you focus on growing organically. I am a huge fan of social media. Um, I think that that is extremely important in getting your message out. Um, I think that it's also a really rich way to be able to find your target. So as you're defining your audience and you talk about what brands they follow, what influencers they follow, you can start mm -hmm. to target them very specifically for free through social media. It, it takes a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time, um, but you can do it. And so I definitely recommend people starting out that way. I recommend networking through Facebook is actually great. Usually you can find a group 
um, that has like-minded either business owners um, or entrepreneurs that are in a similar space that can point you to directions or you can join groups where your customers are actually active and discussing and you can present yourself as an opportunity. I also do love email marketing. The trick with email marketing is you need to build your email list mm -hmm. in order for it to be effective. That said, I think anyone can have an email sequence and you can evolve it as your following grows and as your offering changes. So you don't have to wait, and this is true of social media or email marketing, you don't have to wait for a certain number of followers or a certain number of people on your list. Treat the five people on your list as if they're the 5,000 or the 5 million. I think Jenna Kutcher says that all the time, but it's so true because everything is about a personal connection these days. So if you can yeah. talk one-on-one -on -one to someone through an email, they don't know that they're only one of five on your email list, but if you're offering value, they're going to be willing to engage with you. So I do agree social media and email marketing, as well as free networking mm -hmm. is um, the best place to start. You're also going to get a lot of valuable feedback from that and you can then tweak and optimize your strategy from there. Yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> well, I love everything that you've said. I really feel like anybody watching this is going to get so much value from all the information you shared. Yeah. So is there anything that any last minute thing that you feel like people should know or that we've missed? Um, I think we covered it all. Once you have all this information, you're very educated and well informed to put together a marketing plan. And then we just talked about the importance of optimizing. So people change, platforms change. So it's important that you just don't set it and forget it. You're constantly putting stuff out there, learning, and then optimizing as you go. Um, the beauty of digital marketing, especially for people starting out, is that you have data and it's free data. Um, and so you can use that to your benefit. Um, but again, as I mentioned, I do have um, some tools on my resource that, uh, sorry, some tools on my website that serve as a resource for this um, that folks could definitely leverage if they're interested in learning more um, and can always um, pop me a DM if needed to. I really, really like helping people in this initial stage. Um, so any questions folks have, I'm happy to, to help out. That's amazing. And we're going to have all of your information in the down below and we'll have a link to your free gift that you're giving which is your ideal client starter kit yes so thank you so thank much you for so being much. with us courtney we really appreciate it no problem thanks for having me thank you and we'll hopefully talk to you soon yes <laughs> thanks bye bye, bye.